YouTube land. My hubby and many of our friends call me Cat, so you can feel free to as well. So everyone pretty much knows the rules of our new normal now. The most recent thing I've heard is that states are actually thinking about lifting the lockdown orders. This pandemic is not over by a long shot. So the best thing to do, since we can't control what the governments decide, is to wear a mask. South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, all flattened the curve and in some cases totally avoided the curve because in a lot of Asian countries, everybody wears masks when they're outside the house. So the CDC guidelines specify fabric masks. And I think the reason is that those single use paper disposable surgical masks and the N95s really should be reserved for our first responders and anybody who's on the front line. We really don't want to be depleting that supply. Instead, we should be making our own. I made a wish list. I wanted the mask to be carbon neutral, pro-earth, reusable, not disposable, and really low maintenance. So being able to throw it in the wash was key. Also, I wanted to be able to use what was already in the house to save on costs and for the opportunity to upcycle what I already have that's just taking up space. In addition to it being pro-earth, I also wanted it to be antivirus. So an adjustable mask that fits a variety of faces and one that makes the best seal to the face while letting the wearer breathe. Finally, I wanted to use the best materials that could reduce the risk of letting the virus pass. And no fabric mask is going to approach the ability of, you know, like an N95 to do that. But we can at least try to approach the protectability, I'm not sure that's a word, uh, as much as we can. So the trick was to find materials that have the best filtering capability while also being washable. I'm not a medical professional. I'm a teacher who also happens to be a research junkie. I will link all my research documents below this video. So I read a study in which a group of scientists at Cambridge University in England threw a bunch of microscopic particles five times smaller than the coronavirus at various fabrics to see what got blocked and what went through. They also tested the best performing fabrics for breathability in single layers and in double layers. The study found that the materials that had the best combination of both filtering capability and breathability were two layers of pillowcase fabric and two layers of t-shirt fabric. I'm in the theater. Every time we do a show, somebody makes a t-shirt that you gotta buy. I don't wear t-shirts like ever. <laughs> So now I have all this extra fabric to make masks. So I also wanted to add some kind of filter. The two t-shirt fabrics are not going to approach the filtering capability of any medical mask. Adding a filter would probably help tremendously. In the end, I decided to find out what materials are used in N95s. For those of you who don't know, the N95 is the most protective of the medical masks. A very common fabric that's used in N95 masks is non-woven, milk-blown polypropylene. I chose for my mask materials two layers of t-shirt fabric and two layers of non-woven, milk-blown, 100% polypropylene for my filter because, well, N95. I'll give more specifics during the process of actually making the mask. So patterns. I really haven't found any out there that I've loved. So I thought I'd better make my own because I'm OCD. You probably recognize this photo of a single use disposable surgical mask. It's designed to fit loosely on the face. The article I'll link below explains its use. This is the cone mask that I wore first as I ventured out for necessities. The cup shape makes a better seal than the surgical mask and the nose bar really molds to your nose. So it has fewer gaps between the mask and the face for air and droplets to get in. It took a bunch of tries to come up with the right version, but I think I got it. I'll make this pattern available for free below to download and print. And all I ask in exchange is two clicks, the like button and the subscribe button, which is even more important. Please feel free to share this video widely as well. I am obsessed with spreading the word about the importance of mask use in this unprecedented time. Here's the mask we're gonna to make today. 
let's get started. Here's my stack of mostly never worn t-shirts. You're gonna need two layers of fabric. You can use t-shirt fabric or whatever you happen to have on hand. It's a really good idea to make sure that your fabrics are two different colors, front and back, so you know what you're working on any one time. I also thought it might be good to chat a little bit about filter materials. I came across a series of videos by a gal named Cindy at fabricpatch.net. And Cindy was once a nurse practitioner. There's a list on their website of non-woven materials for filters. And the one that is non-woven melt-blown polypropylene is something called only fun. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is it. It's used in kids' crafts and to make aprons and shopping bags. I washed it a number of times. It holds up really well in the wash. I don't know if you can still find it. Craft stores, Walmart. I managed to snag a few before the run on non-woven polypropylene began. Other non-woven fabrics, polyester, etc., might work just as well. Let's do your research. There might be some other things you can use for a filter. The study actually found that vacuum cleaner bags came the closest to the filtering capability. Unfortunately, I don't know whether vacuum cleaner bags are washable. You might look that up. Some HEPA filters are washable, maybe a little more expensive than the only fun. I didn't research HEPA filters though, so I don't know what they're made of exactly, and I don't know whether they can be worn on the face, I don't know their chemical makeup, something to look up. Maybe like me, you have a bunch of these reusable shopping bags that feel like they're made out of paper. That's non-woven polypropylene. The only thing is you don't want to use the portion of the bag that has a kind of a silkscreen image or logo on it because you're not gonna be able to breathe through that. The rest of it probably will work pretty well for a filter, especially since they're already made to hold food. I assume they're not toxic. So I'm not gonna make you sit through my stitching, but also you have options. You can use a sewing machine. I'm going to use my crappy old sewing machine. You can also hand stitch it. If you know how to sew a running stitch and make a knot in thread, if you don't want to sew at all or can't sew at all, you can use a permanent fabric glue. I haven't tried it yet, but maybe I'll make a video of that experiment. Some tools you're gonna to need. Tape measure, obviously this is not a good tape measure. I'm not sure where my fabric tape measures are. Taylor's chalk, so you don't obviously have to have Taylor's chalk. You can use a pencil or anything else to make your marks. To hold fabric together, I am avoiding putting pins into the surface of the mask. I'm only pinning seam allowances. Here are these great little sewing clips. Not everyone's gonna have those. And if you don't have straight pins or sewing clips, but you have binder clips, you know, office binder clips, those work just fine as well. Fabric scissors, wire cutters, and needle nose jewelry pliers. You can use really any pliers that you have. So first you're gonna download and print and cut the pattern. I did this on cardstock and I'm using ordinary scissors, not fabric scissors. Okay, so that's the finished pattern. You're gonna cut two pieces of your front fabric. And by the way, t-shirt material is a little tricky to work with. It's far less stiff than regular cotton fabric. And you're going to want to cut two of the front filtering material, two of the back fabric, and two more filter pieces for the back filter. If you were thinking about decorating your solid colored masks, now would probably be the time to do it. And I highly recommend you only use permanent fabric markers. Anything else like those puffy fabric paints, for example, might make the mask more difficult to breathe through, but these ought to be okay. You're going to sandwich the two front fabrics between two filter pieces, lining up all the edges as exactly as you can. I'm going to mark a quarter inch seam with Taylor's chalk. You can do that with a pencil. This is very helpful for me. It may be helpful for you as well, though I suppose if you're a pro, eyeballing it is probably really simple for you to do. And you're going to just stitch this front face seam from edge to edge. 
I'm going to hold the pieces together with straight pins. Again, you can use sewing clips if you would like, but I'm only going to pin inside the seam allowance and not in the surface of the mask proper. The face of the mask has been stitched. Because it's the face and we've stitched along the face, there might be some concern about the perforations that were made by the stitches. This shouldn't be a concern as they're not open perforations. There's of course thread in the perforations and also the perforations in that surface of the front half won't line up with the perforations in the back half. But if you are concerned about that, you might take some permanent fabric adhesive and just run a bead inside the seam and also along the stitches on both sides of the front half of the mask face edge. You're going to do the same with the back pieces. You're going to sandwich two layers of back fabric between two layers of filter. And same marking of about a quarter inch seam, pencil or tailor's chalk. and pinning the fabrics together in the seam allowance. Okay, I've pinned my back layers, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch this quarter inch seam, and I'm gonna stop about a quarter inch from the last edge. We've stitched the two halves of the mask, and now we're gonna work on the ears. You're going to fold the dotted line of the ear, maybe a little below that dotted line. Lay it on top of each of the pieces and mark that line right on the filter layers. You're going to do that on both filter pieces of each of the mask halves. So now you've done this for both the front half and the back half. You're going to cut just the filter. This is just to eliminate bulk in the places where I don't need it. We are going to fold the outer fabric layers of the mask over the filter and then pin them right there at the very edge. It won't matter that there are a couple of small perforations at the ears. We're going to sew ties there anyway, so no big deal. What you're going to want to do is to make sure that these are even, you know, so you may have to repin a little bit later. This is just to hold the various layers in place. All right, you're going to do the same with the back half. Next, you're going to trim the seam allowance of the face stitches of both halves fairly close. Notching the seam allowance doesn't work. I tried it. It gets really bulky and messy at the seam when you turn the mask inside out. So I just trim pretty close. It works fine. I'm going to take this back half and just cup it the other way open the front half, nest the back half right into it. I'm going to line up the center seams together. I'm going to pin those center seams and the ear edges. All right, so now what I've done is lined up and pinned the top edge from ear through nose to ear in the seam allowance and I made some guide marks with my tailor's chalk so I could have some markers to follow as I stitch about a 3 8 inch seam allowance from ear to ear. And now the top edge of the mask has been stitched. Now I'm going to cut two notches, one in each of the cheek Vs. And we're going to do a couple of things. The first is to really nest the back half of the mask right into the front half of the mask. I'm going to repin the ears so that they're absolutely lined up right in the seam. Do that in both ears. I'm 
I'm going to put a pin right in the center seam allowance. And now I'm going to trim all of the excess of this back half of the mask. And I'm just going to follow the front outer layer as a guide. We are going to sew a pocket on three sides from the seam allowance up towards the edge, about a quarter or an eighth of an inch across, and then you're going to stop at the corner, leaving the fourth side open to slip the nose wire into. Another thing I needed to find was something to make the nose wire out of that was washable so it couldn't rust. There are a few non-rusting metals, copper, galvanized steel, I think, and what I ultimately decided on, which was aluminum craft wire. This is a little fatter than the 16 or 14 gauge that people have been using. Uh, so it's durable and it holds its shape really well, we've discovered. Copper wire is a little more flexible, so I don't know if it'll hold its shape. And galvanized steel, I think, has a coating on it, and I don't know how that holds up in the wash but this has been doing very nicely for us. Okay, this is the aluminum craft wire. I'm going to cut a three inch piece with my wire cutters, though should be able to break it just by bending the wire back and forth a few times. I like my jewelry pliers because they have a very small nose, though, as I said, it's probably just as good to use a regular pair of pliers. I'm going to turn the ends in towards each other fairly evenly. And then I'm going to squeeze them as flat as I can, both ends. Now I want these potentially sharp edges to be away from my nose, so I'm going to bend the wire in the middle in the opposite direction so that it's an even bend. Here's the mask, and I have stitched a three-sided pocket. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just going to insert the nose wire in between the front fabric layer and the back fabric layer, right into that pocket. And all that's left to do is to finish stitching that side. I might just hand stitch that last side of the pocket. And just know that when you turn the mask inside out, this is going to be upside down. It will be okay though. Uh, all you're going to do is you're going to turn the wire inside the fabric. All right, next thing we're going to do is stitch the jawline seam from one ear to just past the center seam where the chin is. And I made some markings to guide my stitch about 3 8 inch seam allowance. And now we've stitched the jawline to about an inch past the center seam. We can turn the mask right side out at the opening, making sure that the seams are rolled out. We don't want to iron the mask with a hot iron, by the way, in order to avoid melting the polypropylene. Though, according to the website, the Oli Fun can be ironed with a cool iron, but I don't actually think it's necessary especially not if you're using t-shirt fabric. The opening where we turn the mask right side out is now ready to be closed up by turning in the edges at the seam. I'm going to pin the unstitched corner of this ear. What we're going to do is top stitch as close to the edge as we can of the jawline all the way to the end to close the opening. So now the jawline is closed and it's time for the ties. So when deciding how to tie the mask onto the face, I realized that anything that was fixed width might not be adjustable enough for a variety of faces. I I felt though that whatever I was using to tie the mask to my face needed to have a little give so it would keep the mask fairly snug. 
some kind of elastic, and I know elastic is kind of scarce right now. So I decided to use a combination of fabric tie so that the user could just control how tightly he or she ties the mask, and also a little bit of elastic for a little bit of give to hold the mask to the face snugly. Hubby and I also discovered that our ears are built in such a way that anything wider than a quarter inch doesn't seem to stay on. I don't know why. So a quarter inch fabric and a little bit of elastic to attach to the mask will give it a little bit of give. People are using all kinds of different fabrics for their ties, uh, bias tape, or you can make your own bias tape. I don't have time to make bias tape. So I ordered a bunch of this quarter inch grow grains, very strong, and it's, I don't have to do anything to it. It's pretty much ready. I am, however, gonna want to cauterize the ends with flame or fold and stitch so that it doesn't fray. Here's a couple of ties that I made some time ago. This is bias that I stitched. Again, like I said, I don't really have time to make bias. <laughs> And this is cut up hair elastic, the flat hair elastic. I also have round hair elastic, but that's a little tougher to stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert the end and I can pin it or just hold it with some clips. And the other side as well. And then pin that as well. So you can either stitch the elastic into the ear opening and then stitch that opening closed at the same time, or you can stitch the elastic into the ear opening and continue the stitch as a top stitch over the top edge, avoiding the nose wire all the way to the end and then stitch that final ear closed. It's not necessary to top stitch the top, but if you decide that you want to do that, you want to follow the edge fairly closely so that you're not putting a lot of holes into the surface of the mass close to the nose and the mouth. So I would like to find the nose wire. And just over there by the cheek V, I'm going to give myself a little mark how far I can go toward the edge to avoid that nose wire. And this is Taylor's chalk, so it's going to wash out. Okay, one last detail. If you feel that the mask could fit more snugly, or over the course of wearing it, you notice that it could fit more snugly, you could add a short piece of elastic to the bottom of the mask where it's away from your face. Start by pinning it where you think it would work best. Try it. And when you're happy with where you've placed it, you might opt to then stitch it permanently. You could conceivably also place the elastic on the front of the mask if that works better for you. It should end up behind your chin so it's not creating a gap between the mask and your face. So here's a version of the finished mask. It was made from a red t-shirt and a white t-shirt on the inside. You don't want to bend the nose wire back and forth because you risk breaking it, but you can certainly close and open it however far you need to. The tie at the base of your neck forms a pretty darn good seal. The nose wire you bend to mold to your nose and my chin is right there. I can feel the mask on all parts, all edges. The other thing I'm going to strongly suggest is that everybody wear a pair of glasses to protect your eyes. You can also wear a pair of, oops, <laughs> you might also have a pair of safety glasses that you can wear. If you don't have prescription glasses, really any clear lens glasses will probably be just fine. So again, the mask is washable and tumble dryable. By the way, you can do it in cold water because it's the soap that annihilates the virus, but it'll hold up really well in the wash. This mask should last you a while.
That's Hubby wearing one of his masks. He loves them, says that they're working really well. I might make more videos of different configurations of this mask, you know, filter pockets, maybe nose wire pockets, so you can use whatever you can find. Here are a few of the masks I've already made from the pattern, which I'm going to link below. Uh, as you can see, I had a blue t-shirt, a beige t-shirt, a red t-shirt, and I have a few other colors that I'm looking forward to making masks out of. My plans are to join the ranks of sewers who are making masks for healthcare facilities and hospitals, but they all seem to be asking for the pleated horizontal masks that resemble surgical masks, the ones that fit loosely on the face. But I may decide to put a few of these um, on Craigslist or Etsy or Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace or I don't know where yet. They do take a little longer to make. So if you are wanting me to make you one for personal use, contact me at cat at catgirl.club and let's talk about it. Well, I hope this video has been useful. If you have any questions at all, please contact me. Please like, subscribe, share the video, help me spread the word about the importance of mask use. If you made this mask, feel free to shoot me a photo of you wearing it, and I'll see you next time.